So we could ask why displacement? Why must we come up with another field? And the answer, I guess, is it makes Gauss's law work inside and outside the dielectric. Right? Because what is it? It's the integral, and that was epsilon naught e plus p. Oh, that's basically d. The integral of e, a d dot dA around a closed surface equals the free charge that's causing everything to happen. Right? That's, that's getting pretty simple. So let's look at an example. All right. So let's say we have a charged, uh, we have a, a, a charged wire, a rod of charge, a thin rod of charge. And it is the free charge. It's what's making everything happen, lambda f. And then outside this thing is a uh, wire is a solid dielectric cylinder. All right. So let's see. So and this is solid. Okay. So a dielectric cylinder. And it's really long, so we have all of the symmetries that we like. I'm just drawing it short. Okay. So this is a standard dielectric problem. We have a free charge and it induces a bunch of bound charge. All kinds of exciting things happen. But the point of using the displacement in Gauss's law is we don't have to think about those. All we got to do is apply Gauss's law. So we say, well, let's imagine a length of this L that's really long. And let's say um, it has some radius big R, I guess. And let's just imagine a Gaussian surface. So if we have a Gaussian cylinder, what would it be? It would be D. We know we have symmetry, so as long as we're on a cylinder that it has its same axis as, as the dielectric cylinder, then D is going to be constant. And the circumference is 2 pi little r, because we have a variable size Gaussian cylinder, um, times L. And what does that equal? That's the left side. That's the integral of D dot dA. And the right side is just the free charge, which is just lambda f times L. All right, so cancel L, cancel L. And you find that the displacement equals lambda f over 2 pi r. And you say, now wait a minute, is that for inside the dielectric cylinder or outside? It's for both. It doesn't even matter, the dielectric cylinder. We'll use that later when we're getting the E field. But for this itself, it's for both r is less than big R and um, r is greater than big R inside and outside. So now we have um, the displacement. If I want to make it a vector, it would be out if you feel better to see it as a vector. Right? So it's just like doing Gauss's law for a line of charge. It's this field that just follows this standard equation, 1 over r dependence, and really doesn't do anything interesting at the interface. So now let's use that to get the electric field. That's the thing we really want.